No one expected this from China. Not the West, not Tesla, not even the industry insiders who live and breathe battery tech. Yet, here it is, 800 miles of range on a single charge. Not in a concept car, not locked in a lab, but real, functional, and hitting the market this year. This isn't a 5% improvement. It's not a clever tweak to existing lithium cells. This is a direct punch to the face of every automaker still clinging to outdated chemistries. And the timing? Deliberate. Calculated. It's China's full-scale declaration that they're not just catching up, they're taking over. Behind closed doors, a Chinese firm few outside Asia had even heard of Weilion New Energy quietly cracked a battery formula the world thought was still years away. Their prototype didn't trickle out through leaks or rumors. It dropped like a bomb. One moment, experts were debating whether solid-state batteries would arrive by 2030. The next, China unveiled a semi-solid-state cell with over 500 watt-hours per kilogram a number that makes Tesla's current 4,680s look primitive. This battery doesn't just beat the competition, it obliterates it. The industry's reaction, shock, silence, then scramble. No one had seen this coming. Not even Tesla's own RD wing, which has been trying and failing to mass produce its next gen cells. Now their battery day promises are officially outdated. The energy density is so high that for the first time, 800 miles of EV range fits into a standard size sedan without massive weight, without sacrificing trunk space and without exotic materials mined from the ends of the earth. This changes everything. Design limits, weight ratios, platform engineering, supply chains. Cars that once needed massive packs to barely scrape 400 miles can now travel twice that distance with room to spare. And the cost, that's the part no one was ready to hear because this isn't a startup fantasy. It's backed at the national level and already in pre-production. The company behind this revolution, We Lion, isn't some Silicon Valley darling. It's a deep tech R. D powerhouse forged inside advanced research labs and embedded in a tight-knit web of industrial alliances. It doesn't do public demos. It doesn't chase venture capital. It builds breakthroughs in silence, then scales them at high speed. Their partner is NIO, China's premium EV brand, often called the Tesla of the East. But after this, that nickname may no longer apply. Tesla's not the benchmark anymore. The new benchmark is NIO's ET7, a sleek electric sedan, that will ship this year with Wee Lion's 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid battery, offering real-world range close to 1-0 kilometers, not lab estimates, not test track fantasies, verified range on Chinese highways under normal conditions. And they're not stopping there. Sources inside BYD and Xpeng China's other EV giants confirm early talks to adopt the tech. Licensing deals are on the table. Battery pack integration is being explored. A wave of adoption is about to crash across Asia, while the West is still debating how to build 250-mile EVs without nickel shortages. But the real weapon behind this tech isn't just chemistry, it's architecture. WeLine's battery uses a semi-solid-state lithium design, a blend of solid-state stability with the manufacturability of liquid cells. It's the best of both worlds, safe, scalable, and radically more powerful. And unlike vaporware from Western startups, it's already certified for road use. With 360 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level, it leaves behind not just Tesla, but also every major Korean and Japanese cell maker. LG, SK, Panasonic, all are now trailing in both energy density and charging speed. That capacity comes from one critical design choice, ultra-dense cell stacking. By fusing a novel electrolyte matrix with high-capacity anodes, WeLion's engineers eliminated the space of volume most batteries waste. What's left is a compact block of pure power 20% lighter than equivalent lithium-ion packs, yet twice as capable. This alone would be enough to shift the industry. But then comes the clincher. Thermal stability at high speeds. Unlike traditional lithium batteries, which heat up under fast charging and lose capacity in cold climates, this new battery maintains performance even in harsh winter conditions and during rapid supercharging. Tests show minimal degradation in sub-zero temperatures, something even Tesla's next-gen cells can't handle. No more range anxiety in Minnesota or Norway. No more sluggish charging in a snowstorm. Cold weather performance just got solved. And fast charging? The Achilles heel of long-range EVs? This battery handles it with ease. Early tests show 0 to 80% in under 20 minutes, 
with future iterations eyeing 10-minute full charges. Not hypotheticals, not lab dream, real data, real vehicle. The auto world's center of gravity just moved decisively, irreversibly east. And no one's ready for what comes next, not even Tesla. Because when the bar suddenly jumps that high, even the king starts to look shaky. Tesla's crown jewel, the 4680 battery once hailed as the backbone of next-gen EVs, is now staring obsolescence in the face. It was supposed to change everything. Higher density, faster charge, lower cost. But the promise has outpaced the production. Elon Musk himself has admitted it. Ramping up 4680 cells has been a nightmare. Factories set half utilized, yields are down, margins are squeezed. Meanwhile, China has leapfrogged. The new salt-based architecture doesn't just match Tesla, it beats it. These cells charge 30% faster, run 20 degrees cooler, and in pure power-to-weight ratio, they're leaving 4,680s in the dust. What does that mean for Tesla? It means the unthinkable, being forced to buy from its greatest rival, because China is now producing batteries that offer a lower cost per mile than anything Tesla can build internally. That metric cost per mile is the holy grail of EV economics. It's the figure that decides who wins fleet contracts, who dominates rideshare, who rules autonomous transport. And it's slipping from Tesla's hand. Behind the scenes, sourcing teams are panicking because there's a second challenge brewing, and it has nothing to do with engineering. The raw materials game just got flipped. The new batteries aren't just powerful, they're disruptive. No cobalt, no nickel. Two minerals that Western supply chains have fought over for years are suddenly irrelevant. Instead, China's using LMFP lithium manganese iron phosphate, a recipe built on abundant domestic ingredients. And that changes everything. Western automakers from GM to Volkswagen are still tangled in the lithium triangle of Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia, where extraction is slow and contracts slower. Meanwhile, China now owns not just the battery technology, but the supply pipeline that feeds it. This isn't just vertical integration. This is vertical domination. The entire battery supply chain design, materials, manufacturing has shifted to Asia. And not just Asia, China. It's no longer about who builds the best EV. It's about who controls the fuel of the future. And right now, that control is no longer in American hands. The shockwaves are already hitting. Because when you can go 800 miles on a single charge, everything changes. Think about that.